listeners, this is Dr. Amit Ahuja, Assistant Professor from University School of Education, Guru Gobind Singh Indra Prasad University, Delhi. Today we are going to discuss, reflect upon the process of the inquiry approach in science. Any methodology or an approach of teaching depends upon the objectives of the lesson, needs of the learner and nature of content in hand. First of all, it is essential to look upon objectives of science teaching and as per National Policy of Education 1986, the objectives of science teaching are developing the spirit of inquiry among the learners. Yes, the spirit of inquiry generates a spirit of motivation among them in fact. Otherwise, there is no use of conducting any kind of activities in sciences. Things begin with what, why, how of a phenomena. For example, if a bulb blew out in a class, the student may ask what happened, how does it happen, why it happened. So all these three what, why and how of that process may lead to spirit of inquiry among them and they, they may move ahead, however, under the guidance of a teacher. Another thing is developing objectivity among the students. They should avoid subjectivity. They should focus on objectivity. The difference between objectivity and subjectivity is that sun is a star. It's, ob it's an objectivity. It's a scientific fact. But sun is an angel and people of certain faith offer holy water to that. So it becomes a matter of subjectivity. Objectivity means universal acceptance of a thing. Third thing is that there must be courage to question among the learners. Courage to question does not mean that they should come out of the way or they should show some kind of aggression. No, they should be able to ask, they should be able to think and during this thinking process, confusion is the first step. Yes, without confusion, uh, the learner may not be motivated to go ahead. So courage to question begins from confusion, but that confusion must be resolved by the teacher. If it is a question, then a relevant answer must be there. If it is a query, then it must be conducted, organized to find out the facts. Another objective of science teaching is problem solving. Problem solving is the highest form of a learning. If there is a problem, there must be a solution. Problem means anything that disturbs you is a problem. Solution means solution is a state in which the problem does not exist anymore. If it exists anymore, then at least it cannot be regarded a solution. Problem solving is a process. Actually, it is a way or the means of arising, of arriving at a state that is solution in which a problem does not exist or the problem should be motivating enough so that students are perturbed to find out its solution. Decision making, you should have a definite stand and a vision. It should not be diverted in nature. So decision making means arriving at a definite conclusion and holding it firmly. Investigating, that is exploring. For example, I previously posed the situation, the bulb blew out and the students ask, what happened? How did it happen? Why did it happen? So, we need to conduct an inquiry. If I am interested, what happened? So, I need to investigate on that line of action. What happened? Okay, blue uh, bulb has blown out. How did it happen? I switched it on immediately, bursted. Okay, why did it happen? Uh, when it bursted, some, uh, some sound was uh, ex experienced. So, that means, is there some gas in the bulb? Yes or no? Is there some vacuum in the uh, bulb? Yes or no? Now, if the, the teacher is there, he will say there is no gas, but there is a vacuum. Let us explore this. Then it becomes a perfect part of an investigation. So, this is an example of conducting an investigation. Developing scientific attitude. Scientific attitude means how do you view the world? You see, there must be difference between scientific attitude and scientific aptitude in competitions, professional uh, competitions we gauge the aptitude. Aptitude means mental disposition of something, that is something is cognitive. But attitude means how do you view, 
how do you develop that outlook towards the world so ultimately that is aptitude that helps us in developing attitude so attitude is uh, a kind of resultant that develops because of an aptitude so in competitions since there is lack of time it is advisable to go aptitude using scientific method yes become logical and systematize in exploring the things in hand don't be haphazard be organized be cohesive reducing all sorts of prejudices based on sex caste religion language etc that is we must be secular enough in conducting our activities that is things should not be viewed from a particular perspective after discussing the objectives of uh, science let us discuss process approach that is what is the nature of science ultimately science is not just content it's just near not merely a body of information a collection of laws principles etc it's content plus something and that something is process for example water boils at 100 degree celsius this is a process this is a content but the apparatus needed to verify that like in setting up of porcelain and using thermometer etc then using a burner and then measuring recording and finding and arriving at a conclusion yes water boils at 100 degree celsius is process and that is that something so science is a body of knowledge as well as a way of arriving at that body of knowledge and that is a very crucial part of science that is process processes of science are those skills and techniques which are used by the scientists and students who work like scientists for the moment in schools as they study and do research work in science yes process approach definitely is predominantly uh, followed by the scientists but the students also since they are mini scientists in school system they also follow that so there should not be difference between the two process approach requires more time time consuming and but as a consequence of this teaching learning becomes effective instrumental enough interesting long lasting and joyful otherwise there is no difference between the teaching of sciences and rest of the disciplines these are the experiments observations carrying out practicals conducting activities that discriminate science distinguishes science from rest of the disciplines process approach in fact it is an activity based science teaching method initially i have said that a teaching methodology depends upon the objectives of the lesson nature of the content and needs of the learner process approach is an activity based but that activity is performed conducted by the student not by the teacher however in a supervisory way teacher stands there process approach refers to learning science concept using processes of science for example if i said water boils at 100 degree celsius water freezes at 0 degree celsius what happens when certain substances are dissolved in water to its boiling and freezing temperature let us see so whatever conclusion we arrive at or will derive that must be probed through some processes that is some approaches using certain practical facts etc only then we should be able to arrive at that one the different processes in science as per their hierarchy are observing observing is best carried out by using all our senses but predominantly we use our eyes so for example if i note something because of its order smell then i may discriminate this for example these are the chemical which have pleasant order others don't have other the pungent order so i may classify them and i later on i may arrive at some inference so observing has been in this context been conducted by our nose as a sense by in our skin or by anything else, by another sense we can also conduct this classifying means placing the things or the data or the matter under consideration in different classes in with respect to certain parameters or features that ordering must be definite and must be rationalistic and must be based on some characteristics so it's a definite uh, way of arriving arriving at some conclusion for example these are the substances that are soluble in water these are the substances that are not soluble in water for example the substances that are soluble in water may be having uh, 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 dielectric constant equivalent to water may have be having bonding like water so that's why they are soluble in water and also it confirms the principle that uh, like dissolves like and water is a universal solvent 
but what about those that are not soluble in water that these are the substances which have very low dielectric constant or may differ from them in from the water in terms of its bonding etc. So, these are this example proved that how can we use classification as a process using numbers in measuring, in predicting, in inferring, in arriving at a conclusion is also a process approach. Measuring that is bringing the some things in measurable form so that we can conduct and act on that in the form of an activity. Using space time relationship is an another process approach in we use these two variables in a cohesive manner that is space as well as time. Communicating that is how do we discuss, interact with others, negotiate with others, object with others, convince others because science does not mean that the things are absolute. For example, sky is blue unless and until anyone does not prove that sky is not blue. So, sky is blue until uh, till that moment when an, uh, some person proves that sky is not blue. So, things are not absolute in sciences, knowledge is not absolute in science. So, that requires the learner must be in an open minded state that must be able to accept that his ideas have been rejected by others are not in conformity with others and at the same time he must be able to convince other about the correctness of his thoughts. So, that comes under communication that is am I able to communicate my ideas with others. So, language in that domain is a very imperative tool and we must remember that language for any discipline like mathematics, sciences, social science and of course, for language it naturally language is a powerful tool that must be used judiciously so that our learners are able to communicate what they are intending. Then predicting, yes predicting with some intelligence, with some rationale, it does not mean uh, guessing, just guessing, mere guessing because it distorts the spirit of nature of inquiry, yes prediction must be rationalistic in one it must be close to some, uh, close to the precision or the exact reality. Inferring means is the learner able to deduce the consequences, for example, oxygen as an element supports combustion first, second water is a compound that contains oxygen as an element support combustion or water that contains oxygen extinguishes the fire. Why? The conclusion may be drawn that oxygen is an element it supports combustion, but water that is a compound and since element lose their property when they become part of compound. However, they combine in definite ratio they lose their properties. So, oxygen that had the property of supporting burning combustion loses because it underwent interaction with hydrogen. So, it is not no more capable of supporting the combustion, but in turn it changes property by combining with water oxygen and forming water that is now it is capable of uh, capable of extinguishing, extinguishing the fire. Here on the other side is a mixture of gases and has oxygen supports combustion because air is a mixture of gases and in gases elements retain their properties. Hence, oxygen as an element supports the combustion, but oxygen by being a part of air as a mixture supports the combustion. So, that is the inference that has been drawn by the learner if we pose these much situation. So, it is a process, it is a powerful process. Defining operationally, yes, are we able to define the things in an operational term? For example, what do I mean by this if I am using this in my course of action? For example, again uh, come to the universal solvent water. Water is a compound in the context of uh, states of matter, but it is a covalent compound in the context of chemical bonding. So, in what sense I am using the word water in my text or my discussion, I must define it operationally. Then formulating hypothesis, yes hypothesis look at the spelling S E S. If it is S I S then it is singular, S E S means it is plural. Formulating hypothesis means are the are the learners able to frame formulate the hypothesis intelligent guess, but that guessing must be based on some past experiences, evidences or other related work also. Interpreting data, are you able to interpret the data? That is can the data be subjected to interpretation? That is, if the data is ambiguous, incomplete 
are not related to the situation under consideration, then it cannot be interpreted and it is of no use. The biggest drawback with the data is that if it is not used. Data, information, knowledge, all these things stand valid if they are utilized. Controlling the variables. Variables are the entities that are able to worry. Parameters reflect the current status of a phenomena. We focus upon variables only. Are the learners or the students able to control the variables under the situation? That must, that is, are they able to perform or they able to even think of conducting a control experiment in a given situation? And the last is experimenting. Yes, experiment, practical and activities form an inherent part of sciences. In an experiment, the learner moves from known to unknown. In practical, the learner moves from known to known. Activity means it's an act, it's a sequence of acts. For example, in experiment, I need to verify. I am in a known state, but I need to move an, in an unknown state. For example, to determine the uh, two anion, two cations in a given salt, to determine the salt of a strength of a given solution, etc., by means of titration, then it becomes experimentation. But if I, a learner is asked to show that, that as uh, that the length of a conductor is directly proportional to its uh, resistance, let us verify or uh, voltage is directly proportional to uh, current, then let us verify. So, these all these aspects come under the domain of practicals. So, learners, process approach is the one of the most powerful approach that strengthens the nature of science in itself alone. Because science is content plus something and that something is comprises the ways, means of arriving at that body of knowledge and process approach in itself offers a number of processes that we have discussed so far that facilitate learner to adopt, work out with that and arrive at that conclusion. Thanks.